Great is the Lord, he is holy and just, by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Praise, praise, praise is the Lord. This morning we have gathered here because we are here to declare how great God is. And to you all I say very good morning to you and may God bless you as you join us to, uh, in this worship service. And this service is not mine, neither is it yours, but it's God's service. And when we join our heart and souls together, we are all transformed by the love of God, and we go forth to serve our Maker. And now I would like to invite you to join me in uh, our gathering words that are projected on the screen. Great is our God and worthy of praise. God's goodness knows no limit. God's grace and faithfulness toward us is boundless. Praise be to God. Let us now sing joyful, joyful, we adore you.
God's holy name is majestic. The mountains tower and the seas roar in praise of God. When we look at the heavens, we rejoice in God. The moon, stars, planets, solar systems are a delight to us. Come, people of God, let us shout our praise to God. God, we thank you for this breathtaking creation. O oh God, your majesty and glory surround us here. We've come to together to celebrate your gracious presence and to offer hymns of praise and worship. We've come to rejoice in your mighty and saving acts and to retell the story of your goodness throughout history and in our own lives. Move among us as we worship together May your spirit guide and inspire our thoughts and actions as we spend this time to live our lives in your presence. For we offer this in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Good morning. good morning. Special good morning to my friend Emmanuel. Our first reading is Psalm 106 verses 1 through to 3. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? 
Blessed are those who act justly, who will always do what is right. Our second reading is Mark 4, verses 26 to 29, the parable of the growing seed. Jesus also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scattered seeds on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seeds sprout and grow, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. He sends the readings. I once uh, heard the story of uh, a Sunday school teacher who asked her Sunday school class if they could think of ways in which people waste their time. What are some of the ways people do waste their time? Well, she got the answers. And one of the answers came from a little boy who raised his hand and said, how about taking a bath? Well, I can identify with this boy because growing up, you know, all of us really, whenever they called our names, come and take a shower, that's a waste of time. I should be watching TV or playing or doing other things. Children are in all of us. Let us pray. 
Oh God, we come to you so that you could bathe us, so that you could shower us, you know, with your blessings. Let them fall upon us so that together we can be able to reflect on your word and live it out. In Christ's name we pray and say, Amen. This is our second Sunday into our four-week worship series that is titled The Abundance of God. Last week, we introduced this series and we took more time to do that. So today, we are going to just go straight to the point uh, with our reflection. So this uh, series is actually mainly, it's mainly or solely based on an outline that was developed by Erica Skimper uh, and the outline appeared in the Reformed worship, especially in the 112th issue that was published in June of 2012. Last Sunday, which was August 15th, we reflected on abundance in creation, and we actually relied mainly on three passages, one from Genesis 1, the second one from Psalm 104, and Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. If I could uh, maybe summarize our reflection for last Sunday, I could summarize it this way. God has not provided, but God has been providing every needed thing in creation. And I'm using the present perfect continuous tense there to refer to the fact that God started and God hasn't actually stopped. And as we reflected on uh, the passages from Genesis and even Psalm, we learn that these, pas these two passages show us how it is God's intention from the very beginning, from the very first minute, God started creating that there be enough or plenty even to sustain all of God's creation. And in the gospel according to Matthew, we are reminded that God continues to take care of all of us and God is attentive to all of our needs and God cares for the most intimate details of our lives. And today, we are going to learn something. Hmm? What are we going to learn? We are going to learn about plant life cycle. Now, get your pencils and pens ready. Just kidding. So today we are going to be reflecting on abundance of grace. Last week, abundance in creation. You know, there's a lot. Among those many things, we do have the abundance of grace. Well, a couple of months ago, a few weeks ago, I would say, uh, my son Daniel uh, learned something in their class. They uh, learned about plant life cycle. He was very happy, you know, to repeat those. When I got home, he would tell me about all those things. And so I say, oh, praise be to God, you learned it too. Then after learning that, you know, every teacher has to give you an assignment. So they were given an assignment. The teacher asked the children in kindergarten, praise God for Canada, uh, where they give children assignment to plant something. So they gave them an assignment to find seeds of their choosing that they could plant. So Daniel loves tomatoes. So he picked up tomato seeds and he decided to plant them. Now the problem is Daniel wanted to see it start growing right away. <laughs> so we planted everything, you put it in there in the soil and everything. So after a few hours, he came back to it. Nothing happening because the teacher said, 
they had to document everything, you know, the development of the seed because it's going to grow and so forth. Nothing happened. So he came to me and asked, nothing is happening. I said, well, I don't know, you wait. Then four days later again, he came and even asked me and his mother what was happening to his seed. And asked actually me if I could make the seed grow or sprout. Can you imagine? I can do miracles. Then I looked at him and said, you know what? I can't do that. Just be patient. That night, for some reason, something happened. He woke up early in the morning, and the first thing that he saw was that the plant was born, and something was just sprouting out of the ground there. And he was so excited. So excited that he had to come and ask everybody in the house if they had anything to do with that. Because the day before, you know, he was asking what was happening if somebody could do at least something. So he asked everybody what they did overnight so that the following day he could see the result of what they might have done. So I personally had to just admit and even insist that I had nothing to do with it because I have no idea about what really happened. And I said to him, I don't think anyone in this house had anything to do with that. Nobody made that happen. So he looked at me, nobody made that happen. Then I said, yes, it is mysterious. And I said to him, creation works in ways that we can't understand, control, or even manipulate. In other words, creation works in mysterious ways. And I would like to show, this is what Daniel uh, planted. And we do have here a lot of uh, uh, tomato plants here coming out. So when we have it, tomatoes, we will have to sell them. Please be prepared to come and buy some of them. So creation works in mysterious ways. Even farmers, when you go and ask them, oh, you have planted this or that, can you make the seed grow? Can you transform the seed so that we could see the plant above the ground? They too tell us that there's nothing that they can do. But what I like is the fact that Jesus was able to illustrate this mystery of creation in the parable of the growing seed. What it does is to actually compare the kingdom of God to somebody who just decided to scatter seed on the ground. And that somebody is a farmer. It could be a gardener. It could be somebody like Daniel who decided to actually plant tomato seed. And this person who was able to scatter the seed may have done what they had to do. They took care of the soil, prepared it, and they put the seed in there. But the parable says they did not stay there and sleep over there and see if the seed could actually transform into plant. But Jesus said that the seed sprouted. Whether or not the man who scattered them or the farmer slept in, woke up, or even understood the growth process. The man just benefited from the harvest. Although its development did not depend upon him. He was just very, very happy to see the end result and harvest. He was just enjoying everything while his understanding of the workings beneath the surface of the soil was just cloudy. He had no idea about what was happening. What is this story really telling us? This story is telling us something about the abundance of God's grace. In creation, even long before Jesus was born, 
God had created this world full of God's grace, the kind of grace that makes many things grow, including us. I have never heard somebody say, you know what? I'm going to make myself grow. At 12 o'clock, I'll turn, I'll turn from seven years old to 16 years old. Nobody. We just go sleep. Oh, it's my birthday. Happy birthday. We just sing. By God's grace, we just go from this year to that year, from being one year old to two years old. All that by the grace of God. We are plantings of God in the garden of God. But there is wisdom in something that I heard from a farmer as I was visiting some farms in Zimbabwe. We're just talking about so many things and the challenges that farmers would face and so forth. And that farmer said to us these words, the time in between sowing and sprouting can be discouraging. Even say that because, you know, you want to be able to see the result right now. It's just like drive through. I want my burger right now, oh God. Otherwise, you'll not have my money. We want to see the result too. So it can be very, very discouraging when we don't see what we want to see. When we don't get what is beyond our control. Then he said, but I just water the seed and do what? And do other things that need to be done around the farm. And guess what? Because I know it's not up to me, but it's up to the guy upstairs. That's what he said. The guy upstairs to transform the seeds. In other words, this gentleman was saying, it's only by God's grace that all the transformation is done. I can do other things. I can just plant the seed and water it. Go, sleep, eat, enjoy myself. And in addition to that, I had to take care of other things on the farm. I will not just fold my hands and say, okay, well, I'll wait for God to do this. There are many more things that can be done. There are things in our lives that we plant, literally and metaphorically. We want to wait for the result. We invest into something. We want to see the result. But as we wait for the result, let us be confident that God's abundance is all around us, beneath us, and even above us. And that grace is always at work, doing things that we can't do, transforming our result into the plant that we want to see. So God brings life into the world as a pure gift without our own manipulation. We do whatever God expects us to do. And then what we can do is to just watch life emerge out of the ground, out of wherever we might have actually invested our effort. Everything flows from God's grace. It can be tempting for many of us as human beings to believe that we are responsible to ensure the result for our faithful effort, to make sure they give birth to something. However, Jesus' parable reminds us that we need not live under that exhausting pressure. There are times when we put pressure on ourselves when we have no control over what is going on. May God help us understand that it is God and only God who is able to make all our seeds and even ourselves grow. So it's all about the abundance of God's grace in creation and even beyond. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God of all seed, we thank you for planting us in this garden we call the world, on this planet we call Mother Earth. Our lives are seed that can be transformed by your grace to offer healing to this world. Help us, O oh God, to do just that. Yes, we are seeds, but we are seeds that can also plant many seeds. We do have so many seeds that are available to us. And each and every one of us can name those seeds. And our prayer, God, is that you may help us to find the soil into which we can plant all these seeds. It can be by just saying hello. It can be by just sending an email to somebody and tell them that we are with them. Those seeds can go a very long way. And yet, as humans, we are always tempted to put ourselves in your shoes, O oh God, and feel like we have to control the outcome of everything. There are seeds that we put into the soil and seeds that really require us to wait for some time. Our world has been planting a lot of seeds so that we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel we've been living in under the shade of COVID-19. We are grateful for the many people who have planted seed and we have seen a lot of result. Even though COVID is still without seal, we know that you will continue to help us plant seed and you will continue to transform those seeds so that in the near future, we will live in a world that is free of fear of the other because of this pandemic that we live in a world that is free of COVID-19. God, we thank you for pouring a lot of grace into this creation. And through Christ, we have come to learn that there is nothing, oh God, that you can never forgive. So we come to you as people are not perfect. You know our shortcomings and we ask that you may wash us with your love so that we may be ready once more to follow the path that your Holy Spirit is calling us to walk on. Bless all the seeds 
that our church is planting. We might not see the result today or tomorrow, but may we learn to put faith in you. May we learn to be assured that you are in your business of working on any seed that we plant. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that you will make us and all our seeds grow. And now we ask that you may answer the prayers that are unspoken and yet are in our heart. Listen to them, O oh God, and bless our whole world. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Christ, the seed planter. Amen. God's rain is like the seed that is scattered on the ground. How it grows, we know not. But there is abundance in the harvest. Let us remember that those seeds of love, hope, peace, and grace, which we carry in our hearts and souls, as well as our wallets and purses, so that in remembering we would offer them to our God for use in the work of reconciliation and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so
God's blessing for us. Let us go forth to proclaim the good news that we are ambassadors of God's kingdom. As seeds planted by God, we go to spread God's gifts of love and hope. Let us go forth to live the good news that we live in a time of new beginnings. As plantings of the Lord, we go to share God's gift of mercy and grace. Let us be at peace. For God is with us wherever we go. We go with the knowledge that God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our guide, will make us and our seeds grow. Amen. May God bless us all.